only those who take care of the evening with Jesus can really enjoy the morning. Before I Sleep is an evening devotional that draws you spiritually to God. Before I Sleep evening devotional helps you enjoy a sound sleep and receive comfort to your precious soul. Helps you enjoy angelic protection while sleeping. Equips you for the next day's exploits. Enhances your understanding of God's plan for your life, your spiritual growth, development and so much more grace for the future. Before I Sleep evening devotional will help motivate students into excelling in life help you settle marital and other issues remember Jesus is not through with you book an appointment tonight with Jesus for tomorrow with before I sleep an evening devotional guide to establish sustain and strengthen your relationship with God by the family pastor Reverend JB Etan. Almighty and everlasting Father, we want to thank you once again for wonderful opportunity you've given unto us. Thank you, Father, because when you open the door, no man can shut. And whenever you shut a door, nobody can open. Thank you, Father, for another opportunity for us to hear you. You promise us that your word will never go and come back void. Let the purpose of your word today be accomplished. Do it, God, and take all the glory. For we pray in the name of God the Father. God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen. Dearly beloved, you are highly welcome to our season of divine visitation. The Lord has assured us that this season, He would visit us. And always, whenever God visits, there's always an evidence. And the evidence of divine visitation is always cross-generational. It is not something that will end with this generation. Anytime God visited people, you always give them the blessing that would outlive their own generation, their own times, their own seasons. And I want to welcome you and your family to a kind of blessing that would outlive you, that would outlive your generation. So shall it be in Jesus' name. Once again, you're welcome to School of Holy Matrimony. God shall surely meet you at the point of your need. For today's meditation, we shall be considering the book of Judges chapter 13. And the topic of our meditation today is divine visitation. Divine visitation. I'd like you to understand that God always visits his people for many reasons. Number one is to change the narrative of the family. Number two is for deliverance. Number three is for encouragement. Number four is for fulfillment of prophecy. Number five is for upliftment. Number six reason why God visits the people is to confirm his message. Is to confirm his love. So today as we will be looking at Judges chapter 13, we will be looking at divine visitation to the family. And a few of things I'd like us to share with is how can we attract divine visitation? How can we sustain it? How can we enjoy it? As a family, you need the visit of God into your family. As we go into the book of Judges chapter 13, the Lord will help us to look at this particular family, the family of Mr. and Mrs. Manoa. Let's have the first verse of it. It says, Again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of the Philistine for 40 years. The first thing I want you to notice is that because of the sin of the people of Israel, they were given out to the children of the Philistines. Now, things that they're supposed not to suffer, they suffered because they were not in good relationship with God Almighty. The second thing I'd like you to notice is that this suffering was for a specific time. And there are often times that the suffering times is not specified. Sometimes it continues until the Lord visits. But whichever angle you are looking at, I want to assure you today, by the divine visitation, every 
form of bondage that you are passing through shall be cut short in the mighty name of Jesus. Now hear me, in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 7, the Lord was able to truncate the suffering of the children of Israel. Remember, the restoration of the Ark of Covenant and the defeat of the Philistines. But what I want us to consider today very strongly is a divine visitation that the Lord embarked upon to a family, a family that was in need. Oftentimes, God visit in order to supply the need of a family. God visit to change the, the narrative of a family. Now, when you look at verse 2, the Bible says, Now there was a certain man from Zoram of the family of the Danites, whose name was Manoah, and his wife was barren and had no children. Now, when you look at what the Bible is saying, Manoah had a wife, and the wife was barren, and had no children. Of course, you know, the right thing to say, and had no child. But when the Bible says, yeah, and had no children, it means there were a lot of children that Mrs. Manu was supposed to have. But because of lack of divine visitation, she could not carry the children. And the Bible is very specific about children, you know, and not talking about a child. I want to assure somebody today, that because you are connected to this platform of holy matrimony, whatever God has kept for you, you would get all of them in the mighty name of Jesus. Now hear this, he says, And his wife was barren and had no children. Now in verse 3 he says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to the woman and said to her, Indeed, now you are barren and have born no children. Very consistent. No children. But you shall conceive and bow a son. In that one verse, there are two things that I want us to consider. Number one, it will talk about bearing children. And now said, I have come to open your womb, and then you shall bear a son. Which means, in this son, it will be a combination of children. It will be a son that will stand the test of time. It will be a son that will represent a generation. It will be a son that will change the narrative. It will be a son that one son that would be equal to generations or many children. It will be a son that will change the history of the family. It will be a, a son that would wipe away tears. It will be a son that will lift up the downtrodden. It will be a son that everybody will not know that because this son has come, that your life has changed. So I want to agree with somebody today. God is about to give you a son, even when he was talking about children. Now let's go to the next verse now. The Bible says, Now therefore, Please be careful not to drink wine or similar drink and not to eat anything unclean. For behold, you shall conceive and bear a son and no razor shall come upon his head. For the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistine. He was going to begin something. Now, one of the things I like you to understand today is that this son is going to change the narrative. So for 40 years that they were suffering, for 40 years that they were in bondage, for 40 years that they were in pain, for 40 years that they were whipping, they were gnashing their feet, somebody was going to come and this one is a son that is going to change the narrative. And he said here, he is going to begin, he's going to begin. So he's going to give an initiation, he's going to initiate a process of deliverance. He's going to begin something that has not taken place for several years. So hear me what the Bible says. Now, he's going to begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistine. So in verse 6, the Bible says, So the woman came and told her husband, saying, Let's look at how she reported the matter to the husband. She said, a man of God came to me, and his countenance was like the countenance of the angel of God, very awesome, but I did not ask him where he was from, and he did not tell me his name. Two basic things was absent. But you know, the excitement of this woman did not allow her to get the details of who the person was. No, so the woman was just grabbing the message, 
uh, and forgetting about the messenger, forgetting about the address of the messenger or the destination of the messenger. But you know, with this kind of excitement, she now came to a home, you know, to report to the husband because, of course, you know, the husband is the head of the family, you know, and by this report, somebody expected something fishy to happen here because already they have waited for so long without a child. But hear me and hear me clearly. If there must be a divine visitation, the, the family must be in peace. They must be in unity. They must be flowing with harmony. They must know that this divine visitation is not only for one person. It's going to be something that is going to bring family blessing. It's going to bring family thanksgiving. It's going to bring family celebration. But hear me and hear me clearly. The Bible says uh, when the woman was giving this report to the husband, she also had to make some confession. Uh, what was the confession all about? Uh, I don't know where he's coming from. Uh, I don't know his name. Uh, and these are the best things that have to accompany every message. Uh, that is why throughout the scripture, where you see the message is always I, Paul Apostle, so that you can know the person speaking. Uh, and sometimes they speak about the destination where he was operating from. Uh, but hear me, this two things were lacking here and yet this woman was speaking to the husband he was a husband that had the understanding he was a husband who knew how to get things right despite what was happening in the family and my bible make me to understand in verse 7 and we said to me behold you shall conceive a son and bear a son that is the woman speaking now, drink no wine or similar drink, nor eat anything unclean, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Manoah, when he heard all this, now the natural thing for this man to do was to begin to call the wife names. But for him to tell the wife, say, you are a stupid woman. You are an idiot. How can somebody come and speak to you? And you don't know the person, and you don't know where the person is living, and you want me to believe you? But I'd like you to see how, how Manua responded to this so as to sustain the divine visitation evidence and blessings. Oftentimes, blessings have been coming to our families and yet we cannot hold it. By the way, I'd like you to understand that the structure of a family, nothing can replace it. And when God wants to visit a family, He's visiting a family to change their narrative, to add blessing, to add value, to cause for celebration, to cause for them to smile. And these are the similar way that God has been visiting in different times. Remember how He visited Abraham? Remember how He visited Hannah? Remember how He visited even Gideon? He visited them in a time where they least expected. But one thing is true about them. There was unity in that family. And so when you don't unite, you cannot attract divine visitation. Hear me and hear me clearly. The Bible says, when this woman came and gave all the analysis to the husband, she also made a confession and said, I didn't ask for the address. I didn't ask for the name. And yet that was not enough to make the husband to begin to call the wife names because he had an understanding. What did he do? The Bible tells us in verse 8. I'd like us to look at verse 8. Very serious. Then Manuel prayed to the Lord and said, Oh my Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come to us again and teach us what we shall do for the child who will be born. Three things I want us to look at. Manuel believed. But he asked for confirmation in such a wonderful way, in such a nice way, without abusing the wife. He said, first and foremost, he prayed to the Lord and said to him, Oh Lord, my God, please let the man of God whom you send come to us again. Look at the word us. The first time it seems as if the angel visited the woman and it was a personal visit. But then this man had to convert it into a family visit. Of course, to you know, for you to enjoy your marriage, each visitor that comes to your home is not coming only for you. The visitor that comes to your son is not coming to your son, is coming to the entire family. The visitor that comes to your wife is not coming to your wife, is coming for the husband, for the children. Ah, the visitor that comes to the husband is coming for everybody. But look at what the Bible says here. Say, please let the man of God whom you sent come to us again. Because Noah had a basic understanding that any visitor that comes into the family is is coming for everybody. Here, Manuel was using the word I'm coming to us, US, 
us. And hear this again. And he said, and teach us again. He has emphasized us again. What we shall do. Look at the we there now. He has mentioned us the first time, us the second time, and we shall do, which means it is a family commitment in order to sustain the divine visitation blessing that is about to pass us by. Hear me and hear me clearly. We shall do for the child who will be born. The last thing I want you to understand is that Manwa believed that the child would be born actually, but he said, I want to play responsibility as a father. The mother will play the responsibility as a mother so that all together we can synchronize. We can put them together. We can harmonize. We can flow as a family. Remember, we are talking about divine visitation. And I want you to understand that when he prayed this prayer, God instantaneously responded to this prayer. And hear what the Bible says in verse 9. And God listened to the voice of Manuel, and the angel of God came to the woman again as she was sitting in the field, but Manuel, her husband, was not with her. Now there are a few things I want us to consider here before we go back to Manuel. I'd like you to know that God has set what we call divine okanogram. And this divine okanogram, which is, uh, you know, trending on the media that people are so worried about who's supposed to be the head and what has the responsibility who's supposed to bow down to one another but hear me and hear me clearly the Bible does not leave us ignorance of the system which God has put in place for us to operate with here I'd like us to go to the book of First Corinthians chapter 11 we shall be reading from verse 1 through verse 3 and then we'll give an emphasis on verse 3 look at what the Bible says it said now I praise you brethren that you remain Remember me in all things and keep the tradition just as I delivered them to you. But I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ, the head of woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. Now hear me in this verse 3. The Bible is very specific in drawing out the divine organogram. Man did not become the head of the family by voting or by election. It was by divine arrangement and so it cannot be destroyed cause it cannot be taken away from him whether he's responsible or not that is the way God has structured it so one thing I want us to understand is for us to accept the reality that God has made man to be the head of a family hear me sir and hear me madam and I'd like you to have this understanding because he did not just say man is the head he started by giving who's supposed to be the head of the man the Christ is the head of man which means man must have a direct access unto Christ and must receive instruction from him so be the head of woman means you must first and foremost acknowledge yourself as somebody under the authority of Christ Jesus who is your own head I hear this because we need to have a proper understanding of this. And he said, and the head of Christ is God. Now, I don't want us to go into the Trinity controversy, which has been for some years now. But there's something I want you to understand that the Bible now went down in verse 8 to verse 12, said a lot of things about this headship. So that before we go back to this divine visitation, we must also be able to establish the headship. It says here in verse 8, For man is not from woman, but woman from man. Verse 8 of 1 Corinthians chapter 11, Now was man created for the woman, but woman for the man. For this reason, the woman ought to have a symbol of authority on her head because of the angels. Remember the Bible tells us about angels here in the book of Judges chapter 13. He said, because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is man independent of woman, nor woman independent of man in the Lord. For as woman come from man, even so man also comes through woman, but all things are from God. So judge for yourself, then is it proper for a woman to pray to God with her head Uncovered. Now let's go back to something that we talk about. He talk about the authority. Because one of the things that every woman expects from a man is that a man must be a father figure, a covering. Now a father figure is not somebody that superintend, you know, is somebody that covers, is somebody that protects, is somebody that defends, uh, is somebody that cares, is somebody that helps one to bring out the best in you. And that is a father figure in the biblical understanding. 
Hear me, sir. Unless you understand this, you may not understand why Manuel prayer was quickly answered because Manuel was making a demand. This is my wife and you have spoken to my wife and you have shared with my wife and yet I don't know you. I don't know where you are coming from. And so many believers have been making mistake out of this. They respond to the authority, instruction that they receive from the church without making the husband to understand it. It is absolutely wrong because he is the head of the woman. Several people have been doing so many things. They do some assignment in the home. They do some assignment in the family. They take their funds, their money, and they go and give out to some things that they claim to be spiritual assignment. Without the husband knowing it, it is absolutely wrong. Now, hear what the Bible says now. Because Manuah demanded, the Bible says in King James Version, it said, Manuah entreated the Lord, which means it was a rigorous prayer, but this prayer had to work because there was an agreement in the spiritual realm that said, look, this is my wife, but I'm not going to just claim the right, but I just want to tell you, God Almighty, you have set the program in order that I am the head over this woman. And so if she has received any instruction from anywhere, I'd like to understand who is the person giving the instruction. Where is the person coming from? What did the instruction for? So that I can have a proper understanding. You have spoken to my wife, but you need to speak to me here and hear me and hear me clearly. The Bible make me to understand that the angel had to come back because the angel couldn't just go back and tell God, I have finished delivering the message. God was now saying to him there, Angel, you have to go back because the man now has re-established his authority as the head over the wife and is demanding that you come back unto him there. So me, God, I cannot set the program in order. I cannot set an organogram in order and I will not respect the organogram I have set in order because God will always respect his word. He says, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my word shall never pass away. I want you to understand this and let me settle the controversy that is going around everywhere every week that you are the head of the woman. It was not by election. It was not by trying to claim it. It is by divine initiative. And God has so many reasons for it. We are not just going to the controversy of it. Because there's, there's no controversy about it. You just need to understand. Now, there's something I think we also need to bring to bootstrap the points here. The, the Bible tells us in the book of First Peter chapter 3, verse 7 in particular, the Lord is telling us about the need for us to know that we are joint heads of the grace of life. Even in being joint heads of the grace of life and being together with Christ Jesus, we need to have an understanding that as joint heads, there's a head. Now let's take it directly from the scripture. It said, husband, likewise, dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife, as to the weaker vessel and are being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers may not be hindered. Now, the first thing I want you to understand is said, husband, likewise, dwell with them with understanding. So you need to understand this woman. And that is what brings divine visitation and sustain it because Manuel understood the, the wife and said, I will not have any issue with you. I know how this program runs. I'm going to talk to God, the King of Kings, the Ancient of Days, the Lily of the Valley, the Bright and the Morning Star, the A to say the A for Alpha, the B for Bread of Life, the C for Christ, the D for the Deliverer. I'm going to speak to him because he has given me power. He has given me authority. And then over you as the husband. And because of that, I'm not going to have issue with you. You may have made your mistake. You may have communicated with the angels. The angel may have spoken unto you. But I demand the authority as a husband to begin to know why the angels came, what he came for, and what is his name. And hear me clearly. The Bible makes us to understand that when he prayed that prayer, God answered the prayer and sent the angels back as the angels were coming back or uh, came back, I'd like you to understand that he came back through the same process basically to correct what was happening in the life of Mrs. Manuel. The, the angel came back to Mrs. Manuel the, and when he came back to Mrs. Manuel, this time around she has learned her own lesson. She ran and told the angel, say, please wait for me. The, let me go and call my husband the, so that my husband can hear from you directly. The, that is to acknowledge the fact that she is a married woman. 
Hear me, sir. Hear me, madam. So Manuel arose. Ah, I like you to understand. Let's go back to what happened. And God listened to the voice of Manuel, verse 9. And the angel of God came to the woman again as she was sitting in the field. But Manuel, her husband, was not with him. Then the woman ran in haste and told her husband and said to him, Look, the man who came to me the other day has just now appeared to me. Mm. Ah, he had to wait for him. You know, for, to know that God is not an author of confusion. He has given you the authority. He has given you the headship. He expects you to be responsible. And he said he needed to wait for the husband to come. But hear me, the very interesting thing that I'd like us to understand. So Manua, in verse 11, so Manua arose and followed his wife. When he came to the man, he said to him, Are you the man who spoke to this woman? And he said, I am. Manua followed the wife. Basically, Manua would have waited in the house and said, tell him to come. If he has come to see you again, tell him to come to the house. I'm the head of this house. I'm waiting here. Tell him to come if he has come back. But he was a very humble man. A man who understand that is a joint head of the grace of life together with the wife. A man who understand the wife he said, dwell with her with understanding. So Manuel needed to follow the wife to go and meet with the divine visitor. <laughs> and this divine visitor was going to change the narrative of their life. I want to prophesy to somebody today. God is about to release a divine visitor <laughs> that is coming from the throne of grace that will change the narrative in your business, narrative in your family. The negative narrative is about to be changed because something good, something great, something awesome, something wonderful, uh, something spectacular is about to happen to you wherever you are. Because when a divine visitor comes, he's about to usher you in into a new dimension. There's a next level blessing that is awaiting a family today. As you hook up onto this platform, God is about to cause it to happen. But what God expects from you is for you to dwell with her with understanding to be united with her. is for you to live in unity because the Lord does not visit a family to shatter. He visits a family that is united so that he can add value unto them. Wherever you are, may God cause a divine visit you know, embark on a divine visit to your family for the sake of bringing in laughter, joy, blessing. And hear me and hear me clearly. The Bible says in verse 12, Manuel said, Now let your word come to pass. What will be the boy's rule of life and his work? Very interesting. Why? Because every family, husband and wife, have the responsibility of delivering the destiny that God has put in the life of your children. So what Manuel was asking is that what would be his role of life? How is he going to live his life? I've waited for so long without a child. Now that is coming, a son that is coming. I want a son that when he comes, he will change the narrative. He will change the history of the family. I want to speak to somebody today. It doesn't matter for how long you've waited for this blessing to come. But I hear God saying to me that I'm about to change the story of somebody's family. And I pray it is you. Mm. I've passed through things in my life. I don't want to just bring my story here. I've passed through a lot of things, but God came and changed our story by this divine visitation. Uh, we have received reports that say, look, it can't, can't work. You won't have a child. You won't have anything. But when God wanted to give us, he did not just give us a child. He gave us sons. That's not the story for today. That is the story for another day. We hear this. The Bible says in verse 13, so the angels of the Lord said to Manuel, of all that I said to the woman, let her be careful. Let her be careful. When we come your way again, we are going to share with you, we're going to name about nine ways of attracting divine visitation into your family. Now, sometimes you can attract as an individual, but into your family, there are nine ways, nine things that you need to do to attract, to sustain, and then to enjoy divine visitation until I come your way again. But I'm interested for divine visitation to your own family. I'm very, very interested. Because when it comes, the pains you've been passing through, the weeping, the gnashing of teeth, the promise and fail, uh, the miscarriages of, of destiny, miscarriages of blessing, miscarriages of divine package that have been sent unto you shall no more be your own experience. That same hand 
you will embrace your blessing. Oh, that same hand that you are putting it on your head like this, you'll be lifting up in praises unto God and say, Father, I praise your name, I magnify. That same step that you have been so disorganized, you don't know how to walk, you shall become a dancing steps. Oh, that same mouth that you used to lament, it shall be a mouth that you will be singing praises unto him. But once again, I want to assure you that divine visitation is imminent and it shall change your story for good. As I pray for you, you will not miss it. You may wish to worship with us by God's special grace. I'm the minister in charge of the Presbyterian Church of Nigeria number five bouquet close of AP Plaza in Wuse Abuja. By the special grace of God, I have volunteered to be your pastor. By the divine mandate, God has made me to be a family pastor, always talking about family. My prayer is that as you join us, God will unite your family. I will grant unto you blessings that would make you outstanding in life. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting Father, once again, I want to thank you for the opportunity you've given unto us. Thank you for the word because you promised us that your word will never go and come back void. Let the purpose of your word today be accomplished in our life in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray that your Holy Spirit will rest upon us. Your light will shine on our path. My God and my Father, you will change our narrative. You will visit us. Not only one person, but through one person in this family, you shall visit the entire family and we shall have family blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we frustrate the plans of the enemy against everyone that is listening to the sound of my voice. Lord, we pray that your own plan concerning us shall work out in a perfect way in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for what you have done. Do for us more than what we ask. For we pray in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen and Amen.